Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to lower your ping and also improve your upload and download speeds by simply using an Ethernet link. So I'm going to be comparing it to a wireless link, a wireless LAN link. So I have a little computer here and this computer is currently connected via an Ethernet LAN cable. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug it and show you the performance when it's just using the wireless link and then I'll show you the performance with the LAN connected. Then I'm also going to take another wireless radio, my cell phone, stream a video from YouTube and show you how having another wireless device interferes with this one and reduces the stability of the ping. Right, starting with the ping, you can see that my ping is hovering around 200. It barely goes over 200 milliseconds. Now, I just want to show you the speed of my line. So I'll quickly do a speed test. Right, so there you can see my results, 16 milliseconds ping and download speed almost 200 megabits per second and upload about 104 megabits per second. Right, so that's with the Ethernet connected. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug it and show you the Wi-Fi link. Right, so I'm going to do the exact same test literally a minute later. Now you can see that it's on Wi-Fi, you can see the signal there. Right, so it should be immediately obvious that by connecting via the wireless LAN, I have a significant reduction in my upload and download speeds. So this obviously impacts your usability on your computer, and especially if you're a gamer, you're going to run into some challenges. Right, so I'm still on the wireless, and my current ping when I try and access this server is about 195. But look at that, you can see now it becomes unstable. Can you see it's gone to 322, 192. And you will see that it keeps on doing this because of the nature of Wi-Fi. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cell phone, which is currently streaming, a HD video and I'm going to move it around on top of this computer. Remember that there's a wireless radio inside here. Uh, as you can see the Ethernet cable is now unplugged and I'm going to put this around here and you're going to see that ping fluctuate quite a bit. Even if I leave it on top there you can see now there's a bit of interference between the two wireless radios. If I take it away and then I bring it back now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a YouTube video on this computer and I'm going to play a video. So that video is now currently playing. You see there ping 706, 279, 1451. And even if I keep it away, you will still see this unstable ping. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the Ethernet cable back in. And you will see the LAN icon on the bottom right of the screen there. Right, so it is now connected via LAN. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the phone back here while it's streaming. And I'm also going to go ahead in this video, just in case it was cached on my phone, and you'll see that it should have no impact anymore on this computer. You see the ping is now stable. And even when I have this wireless device nearby, it offers no interference to that Ethernet cable. So you can see my ping is stable. And if I do a test, I'm going to do a speed test now. And for the most part, the speed test is still pretty fast. You can see my upload and my download pretty fast. Now, if I unplug this and I go back to the wireless and I do the speed test again, you're going to see how it drops. Right, you can see there wireless is now connected. So in this case, my speed test was 
19 megabits per second and there's a good reason for why it reduced even further and that is because my phone is streaming an HD video and the computer is actually streaming a video in the background and all of this is happening concurrently so they are competing for bandwidth in the air. Because don't forget, this YouTube video is still playing. So this computer is still trying to play this YouTube video and it's trying to do the speed test so you can see how this has come down. So if I cancel this YouTube video and do the speed test again, it should improve. Right, so you can see a massive improvement since I closed down that YouTube stream. You can see now I'm getting 30 down and 23 up. Right, so having a look at my ping, you can see that it changes significantly. Look at the ping, 491, 372, 481, and as soon as I plug in the Ethernet, you'll see that that ping will stabilize and reduce. Right, so the Ethernet is now active, and you can see the ping is now below 200. Right, now having a look at a latency test, you can see that I've started the latency test and it's currently on the Ethernet. So having a look at these graphs, you can see that there's one anomaly there and there, but for the most part, they are within the 300 millisecond, except for the last two tests were much better. Right, so if I do the same test with the wireless now and I unplug the Ethernet, Right, having a look at these results, you can see how unstable the Wi-Fi link is. Look at that. And the other thing you may notice is how much higher the latency is. If I scroll down here, yeah, some of them are close, but look at that, 480, 447. But most important is look at that. Look at that, 476. While this result here is close to my Ethernet latency, look at the resulting graph. You see the graph is showing you that it's unstable. You see the fluctuation is excessive. Right, so the tests that I've just done were between the computer and the internet. But let's do tests between this computer and another computer on the same network. So that will test the maximum transfer rates between these computers. So we're no longer reliant on the internet, we are now just transmitting locally. Now if you have a look here, I've got these two connections, the Ethernet and then the Wi-Fi. Currently my Ethernet cable is plugged in. If I show you my link speed, you can see it says one gigabit per second. Right, so I'm quickly connecting via Wi-Fi because I want to show you the link speed on the Wi-Fi. You can see there it says 130 and it definitely fluctuates as I've already shown using that ping latency test. Right, so have a look there, 78. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy a file from a local computer and then I'm going to show you how even though you're getting these high link speeds, it doesn't translate to real life tests. But when it comes to the Ethernet, you'll see that I actually do get close to this one gigabit per second, while the Wi-Fi, it's really unpredictable. Right, so on the same network, I have a NAS and here is a folder and there's a very big file there. It says 15 gigs and this is a movie and I'm just going to copy it to the desktop of this computer. So this is a local copy. I'm not copying via the internet. I'm just copying from one computer to another computer on this local network. And what I want to bring to attention is even though my speed says 117 megabits per second, notice that the maximum copy rate, look at that, four, five, it's not going above 10 megabytes per second. Now, just keeping in mind that this is a byte, not a bit, while this over here is a bit. So you would need to times by eight. So if I'm getting four times eight, I'm only getting 32 megabits per second, while over here it says I should be getting 104 megabits per second. But here, so if you times about eight, you're still getting less than 50 megabytes per second. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in the ethernet cable. Right, so now I've plugged in the ethernet cable. Obviously it's got to renegotiate the link and get an IP address and all that stuff. And watch what's gonna happen. There, ethernet is now connected. 
and look at the data rate climbing just because it's Ethernet. So while the Wi-Fi is still connected, I'm not transmitting over the Wi-Fi, so I can actually close this now. And here you can see the Ethernet link speed. You can see there it says one gigabit per second. If you have a look at the transmit speed, there, 109 megabytes per second. So if you times that by eight, so 108 times by eight is 864 megabytes per second throughput because the switch that I'm connecting to is a gigabit switch. And this is a local transfer. There you can see how much quicker and also how stable the Ethernet is versus the Wi-Fi. Now I'm just going to unplug it, right? It's been unplugged now. Right, so it's stabilized now. And there you can see... Uh, 5.4, not even 6 megabytes per second, while my link speed says 72. My link speed might even go up to 100. It does fluctuate. Right, so there you can see how this little mountain here, top here is the Ethernet and the bottom parts here is the Wi-Fi. Right, now I'm going to explain to you why this happens. Right, so in this setup, I'm showing you a diagram of a wireless LAN. Here you can see we've got a mobile device, we've got a computer, we've got a wireless printer, and there's a laptop, etc. So all of these devices are transmitting over the air. So that means they are sharing the same interface. If this laptop wants to transmit and this tablet is already transmitting, a collision may take place, especially if this laptop cannot sense that this tablet is already transmitting. And what happens is when both of these devices transmit at the same time, it creates noise. When there's noise, the throughput reduces. Now, say for example, this phone was switched off and it's out of service. Now suddenly when you switch it on, it needs to get an IP address from this router if it hasn't already got one, and it needs to send some signaling information. In order to do that, it will also transmit and create noise for the other devices. Now if this router over here has not separated these wireless devices into different channels, what you'll find is as more and more wireless devices enter this domain, the throughput will be impacted and the link speed will be greatly reduced. Now, if you compare that to Ethernet, for example, each port over here is its own communication channel. Each Ethernet port connected to a switch, this is a switch, not a hub, what will happen is each port has full access to the network based on the bandwidth available on the switch. This being a decent switch will allow each device, each client to have full usage, meaning the client here sitting on number three will not interfere with the client sitting here on number one. So if this client over here is transmitting at 100 megabits per second and this client over here is just entering the network, for example, you've just booted up your computer, it will not impact this guy at all. So there'll be no bottleneck because this switch's bandwidth can easily handle that type of transmission. So imagine if you had to own your own lane on a highway. This lane is only for you. You could go as fast as you want because there's nobody in the way. So you'll have no delay, very low latency. And the reason being is that your communication channel is completely unobstructed by anybody else's transmissions. So here you can see a LAN setup and everybody's connected via Ethernet. You can see there are the links. So that means if these computers are all transmitting, it will not bother the transmissions of this computer. So earlier you saw when I put my phone on and then I put it on flight mode and then I switched it on again. It was actually bothering the little computer because the Wi-Fi throughput was being impacted negatively. While when it's Ethernet, that does not happen. So if you look at this little wireless home network, yes, I've got a computer here connected via Ethernet, but all these other computers are wireless. And if all of these computers are streaming at the same time, and say, for example, you just switched on your phone or your phone just entered the domain, maybe you walked through and it became in range to this wireless router and this router then picked up the phone's transmissions, 
immediately at that point, the other devices would be impacted negatively. Once the transmissions become stable and the router has possibly been set up to have different frequency bands to separate the transmissions via different bands, then the throughput may be increased. So the access method for wireless is called carrier sense multiple access collision avoidance. And the reason being is that these devices generally are unable to detect if there's transmission on the network. So say for example C is transmitting, it may not know that there's another wireless device transmitting somewhere else and therefore C carries on transmitting and A starts transmitting and immediately there is noise. So when there's additional noise, the throughput reduces. With these devices very close to each other, they can identify that they are within each other's range. Now the next important thing is to look at something called throughput. Now here I'm at uh, Tom's guide and it said best Wi-Fi routers for 2021. Right, so I scroll down to this beast over here and you can see that it says peak throughput 731 megabits per second and this is a very popular one over here he has a tp link archer and this throughput the maximum throughput you're going to get is 939 megabits per second so you can see that the wi-fi spec is stated there it says 802.11.ac now the AC standard should give you a theoretical maximum transmission of 1300 megabits per second. But here's where it gets tricky. It's almost impossible to get this type of speed on your wireless device. So if you've got a laptop and you're expecting to get 1300 megabits per second, it's extremely unlikely. So the column over here, it shows actual. So even though the standard says 1300 megabits per second, you'll be very lucky to even get 200 megabits per second. I was showing you my little computer, it's called an Intel Nook, and that is also an 802.11 AC standard. For example, you can go to the website of the manufacturer of your computer or your wireless device, and in this case, you can see it gives me the specification of the wireless interface. There it says, wireless AC. AC 8260 so you can go and find the specification of that over here this is the specification and it actually says maximum speed 867 megabits per second but you saw my speed test I couldn't even get over a hundred now just to be clear the speed between the computer and your router is not necessarily the same as the speed between your computer and the internet remember that the internet speed is governed by the isp the internet service provider is providing you connectivity so even though the standard is shown here and it should be able to give me 867 in real life conditions it doesn't happen but if you go back to the switch if you connect with a gigabit cable you will get a gigabit if your computer can do a gigabit and your switch can do a gigabit you will get a gigabit while wi-fi doesn't work the same way maybe you get this router the tp-link archer c2300 and your laptop or your computer is rated also ac 802.11 ac and you should be able to get the 900 throughput in real life you'll probably get less and depending on the transmit power of the router how many other devices are vying for the same communication channel walls in the way atmospheric conditions people walking past other radio interference in your home the amount of loading on the network all of these things are going to impact your peak throughput and just to show you the throughput of a switch you can see here that can do 35.7 million packets per second so the switching capacity is 48 gigabits per second but basically what i'm trying to put forward here is that when you connect via ethernet it's definitely more stable and it's much closer to the rated specification all right so i hope that is explanatory and clear thanks for watching cheers